give me about another minute, I'll wait for this to pop up. Give me about another 30 seconds, I'll wait for this to pop up. Just about another 15 seconds. Alrighty. Everybody. Welcome to the Choir Directors Academy Weekly Seminar. I'm your host, Angela Elaine, where we're mentoring the next generation of directors. Listen, it's a pleasure to be out here. We're broadcasting live on intellectualradio.com and as well as my diehard sweethearts on the Facebook family. We ask that you like, share this video so that we can get out. I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Tonight would not be a bashing session. No, we all have uh, our horror stories <laughs> of directors and even our own personal stories as far as us directing and giving the wrong signals and all that type of stuff. But we're going to learn a bit. and it, it would even be a learning process for me. So like and share. Let every, Tag people so that they'll know. And not necessarily those people that you know that can benefit from this, you know, in that way what I'm talking about. But we want to share and just kind of enlighten people. Maybe we can help them out. Sometimes people do things they really don't know what they're doing. So it's up to us who are familiar with the process to kind of help give them, you know, kind of bring something. You know what, uh, remember that GE commercial, we bring good things to life. Maybe we need to bring it to life, right? Um, it's good to see you all out there, Intellectual Radio. Do me a favor and tag and text and whatever you do on that side of the house, on that side of the aisle. Do that for me and let everybody know that we're here. Facebook, you know what to do. I just want to give a couple of shout outs already. I got my friends on here. I got my friend Don Mayberry, one of my favorite BGBs. Z.A.R., Matthew, my friend, my cousin Shanita, Uncle Jack, good to see you. Hope all is well. Natalie, it's good to see you as well. Shanita, I'm glad you're feeling much better on today. <laughs> Natalie says, I need this. I think I do too, Natalie. <laughs> but it's good to see you all out there. Listen, let's recap last week. Uh, we talked about our choirs necessary. We know we're in the age now where people, where we have the praise team. And sometimes churches do not have enough members to have an official choir. Okay, so, but choirs are necessary. We should not cut them out of the process. Uh, last week, we talked about choirs are biblical. We know that the singers went out before um, before the battle. Hey, cuz, Rosalind, that's my cuz, y'all. She's, she's the reason that I had exquisite travels last year. Good to see you. Beatrice, good to see you as well. Choirs are biblical, and we also know that even when Christ was born, there was a host of angels. And the choir is basically a group of singers. You know, a lot of people got technical. Well, choir is not in the Bible, but if you got a group of singers, more than what? Seven or eight, it's a choir. Ensemble, whatever, it's a choir, okay? Uh, choirs encourage excellence in music because we have to have rehearsals, and we have to practice, and we have to train people how to sing soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, SATBs, all right? Um, uh, also, choirs celebrate the human voice. That is the absolute best instrument in the world is the human voice we have the strings we have the percussions we have the horns we have the piano we have the organs we have the drums we have all of these different instruments but the human voice is just exquisite we can't do anything about that god created it whatever god created he said that it was good also choirs can inspire uh, and in lead worship, you ever notice, notice that when you have a good choir and they're singing good, people in the audience stand up and they get involved. That's what we want to see. You, I don't like when I the choir is singing and I turn around and everybody sit there like a brick. No, no, 
or the Frozen Chosen. That's not, you know, we want people to participate. And when you have a choir that's singing a song that pe that's kept, that has a message and people are able to catch on quickly, then it inspires the audience to participate because a lot of times the best singers are sitting in the audience. Everybody that can really sing is not in the choir. Sometimes they're sitting down in the audience. They have to get a feel of what's going on up front first before they join, okay? Also, uh, choirs help us to work together, show diversity. We have the young, the old, the middle. We have everybody in the choir. And it provides like an entry-level service for new members to come in. Now, all new members cannot join the choir. We do know that, okay? We want you to have some type of skill set in the field of music, at least hold a tune, you know, make it a little easier on us. But... Those are some of the things that we discussed on last week in regards to the choir. I want to give a shout out. got to give a shout out to my mom and my dad. They online as well. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about how to direct the choir. Now, I put this post out here, and I'm not going to read everything that everybody said because I'm not here to embarrass anybody or try to make you feel bad, but we just want you to understand that some things that you do just may be send sending the wrong signal to people. We have all been in choirs or have sang, and those of us who have double who are double double billed as they say we can also we sing in the choir but we can we are also musicians we all have had the opportunity of being in front of somebody that uh, missing cues not familiar with the song they're doing too many hand movements or body movements and all of that kind of stuff now let me start as saying this when you're directing your choir your individual choir church choir that's one thing Okay, because you're doing you're doing the same thing. They kind of used to you, okay. Um, so it's a little easier. And even with them, you need to be kind of distinctive when you're doing things. This right here can't be the motion for everything. You know, looking like a hummingbird, you're just spinning and you're not telling us which way to go. That's not kosher, okay. You need to be definitive in your movements. You know. Um, Make sure your choir understands when you do this, uh, this signal here, that means something. When you do this, that means something. You need to make sure that they understand, communicate what your movements are. It's not necessarily that you have to be like, you know, flamboyant and, you know, like, oh my God, you almost like the Swan Lake. You don't have to be that way. A lot of people think that you have to do all of these different movements. No, because you're going to confuse people. If you, <laughs> you're going to confuse them. And what you want to do is downplay as much confusion as possible. Okay, because first of all, when you stand up there and you got a mass of people, they're looking at you. They already, you know, they're kind of semi-nervous anyway. So when you stand there and you got all these movements going over all over the place and you're not telling us anything, you're losing them. And the worst thing, uh, director's nightmare, is if you're standing there and you walk up to direct and you see everybody's face drop. You know, like, oh. and the musicians are like, oh. you know, how we get this person? You know, you don't want to see that, but it happens. I mean, I've seen some people where, you know, you, they walked up to direct and you see the whole shift in the music department. You're like, oh my God, help us. You know, you don't want that. So I'm just having this seminar. I call it a weekly seminar just to give some insight as to how you can do this. Okay, first of all, you need to understand there are two types of directors, okay, two types. So you're going to get different output from both of them. You got, it's like, I wish I could draw on, a, on the wall and kind of show you what I'm looking at because I drew a diagram to make sure I understand this, um, describe this as best as I possibly can. Shout out to Demetria. She's also uh, a choir director where she minister music, uh, organist, whatever. Hi, Demetrius. Um, you have... You have the director, but you have two types. You have one who just knows the song. We got a whole lot of them out there that just know the song. You know, basically, they can, they sang this so long that they can get up and do the movies and tell the choir which way to go. If the choir gets out of tune, they have no idea how to fix it. Okay? They have no idea what key we're in. And even if they do know the key, they call the key, they have no idea what the key sounds like. You know, they just know the song. Those are your staff directors. Those are just people you... you put up there, you know, just tell them which way to go. Then you have those who know music. These are the ones that can tell you when you're out of tune. They're going to stop it, stop the music. They can tell the musicians which chord to play, one, two, three, four, you know, using the Nashville method. Or they can call out the key. They can either show you on the instrument how this should be played. 
if the choir is out of tune, they can stop them and focus on and correct them themselves with or without music. Two different ones. So you're going to get two different results from them. But even in that, communication is the biggest thing. That's the biggest issue. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. That's the biggest issue. Remember, when you're standing in front of the choir, this is not your ticket to fame. You are not auditioning for a part in a Grammy, in a movie. You are not auditioning for a Grammy award. You are not, you know, remember, I mean, I see a lot of people do this and it's like, this is my, this is my chance to show them what I can do. Well, you already did. When you walked up there and we looked at you, we already know, uh, this is a no go. Okay. This, your job, when you stand before a group of people is to lead them in the direction they should go with the song. Okay, we're assuming that the group that you are leading knows the basic song. They can basically sing. Like, if we're doing Wonderful Is Your Name by Hezekiah Walker, they basically know the first stanza is all of my life. I never see, I never know you to fail. You remain the same, and Wonderful Is Your Name. They know the second verse is woke me up this morning, started me on my way. They know the vamp is for. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, bum, bum, bum. They know that. Okay, we're assuming that. But even, in, and it may sound like the song is so simple, but you know what? If you don't know the song, when you stand before those people, everything flies away. <laughs> you won't remember. So I'm giving you a little background before I get into the technical stuff. All right, so make sure you understand that your job is to lead the choir. You're leading the musicians. And if you have a soloist, you're leading them. They are not going to move or do anything unless you tell them to. It is your job to relay that information early enough so that the music continues to flow. The worst thing you can do is give them the signals at the last minute and you hear breaks in the music. You hear the musicians jump keys, you know, the choir stop, either stop singing or you hear like this gerbil. You know, the choir go, one side of the choir goes this way, the other goes that way because you did not give the signals early. And I'll get into that um, later on in the process. But one thing before I get into the actual hand movements, which I think a lot of people want to see. Um, hey, Selma, good to see you. Um, number one, before you even step up in front of the people, don't waste their time. If you know you don't know the song, sit down, okay? Sit down. Don't do that to people, okay? Because we're standing there and we're, we want to sing. And then you're standing there, you're not, you're not prepared, you're not equipped to do the job. Just politely sit and pass the baton to somebody else. It's okay, okay? I can't tell you how many times they have called me, and I'm a veteran, at this. I mean, I've been directing and teaching the choir. Hey, Scott, good to see you. I've been directing and teaching the choir since I was five years old. And when I say teaching the choir, I'm talking teaching parts because my mother was a choir director and my grandmother was in choir and my great grand. So, I mean, it's kind of like I was already into this mode when I started. So I'm not, you know, and even myself being a veteran, there are times they walk up to me and say, I need you to direct the song. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> and it's, they're like, oh, but this is, no, I'm not doing it because I'm not comfortable enough to stand before people and direct. You don't need anybody that's confused <laughs> standing in front of you and you at a conference or even in your local church. You don't want to do that, okay? So first of all, whether you know music or not, know that song inside and out. Listen to it. Not 10 minutes before the, the choir is getting ready to sing. Listen to that song before and make sure you're familiar with it. Make sure you're familiar with that song. So when you stand in front of them, you know, know the flow of the song. So when you stand in front of them, you can stand with confidence that, okay, at least I know the song. Now, I might not know anything else, but I can at least tell you which way to go. That's like half the battle right there. I can't tell you how many countless times I've seen people stand before. And you can look at them and tell when they stand there, they have no clue. They can't call out the song, lead into the song, or even get the timing right. The choir movement is off, key, off timing. All of those different things impact how people will receive you. You have to understand, the choir has to have confidence in you for you to direct them. They don't care how whatever. They don't care how you jump around. They don't care. Let me just tell you, they don't care. <laughs> they just want to know, do you know what you're doing? That's all they want to know. 
you can stand there and just clap like this and direct the song. It doesn't matter, okay? So I'm stressing that because I see that so much that people don't do that. They just want to get up and be in front of people. Well, why would you want to do that and you don't know? All right? Second of all, um, give clear signals. Whatever you do, whatever your signals are, you know, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> make sure it's clear to your choir. Okay. Make sure it's good. Make sure your group understands. Okay. It's another level when you're di directing a mass choir. Now I'll get to that too. But when you're directing your individual church choir, make sure they understand you. You should be working with them enough, your musicians and your singers, that you, they should be comfortable enough to know whatever you do, we know where they're going. Okay. And that's the main thing. All right. Um, number three, <laughs> Direct according to your ability and your personality. Okay? Everybody is not Ricky Dillon. Everybody is not Donald Lawrence. Everybody is not gifted enough to stand there with a mic and just direct the choir and just say, hey, you know, say that again. You know, everybody is not like that. Okay? Neither is everybody like Dr. Judith McAllister. Everybody's not like Patrick Ritted or my one of my friends, Cornelius Owens. Everybody is not like uh, Dr. Cynthia Nunn. We're all different. So we're all not going to get up there and direct the same. You, The worst thing you can do, I mean, we have people we admire. Okay, I had like maybe five or six directors that I admired as a child uh, growing up. But in each one of them, the people that knew them, when I do direct, they can see their flavor in what I'm doing, but I had to develop my own style. Make sure you give clear signals. Don't try to be like somebody else, okay? Because first of all, every all of us see things differently. Um, just like musicians. All musicians can play the same chords, but they do it differently. All directors do it differently. We see things differently. You cannot, don't try to be somebody else. Just be yourself. Okay, direct the way that God has given you. If he just, if you direct like this, but you tell people which way to go, that's okay. Because that's you. And we get joy seeing you be yourself. We can see the joy on your face. It doesn't matter what you're doing with your body. We can see the joy. And if you have the joy of the Lord on you, this is a gospel choir we're talking about. So if you have the joy of the Lord on you, we'll, we'll see it. We'll follow. We'll see the happiness. We'll see the peace. We'll see all of that. And we'll work with you, okay? So it's not so much all of this different stuff stuff going on. Because if you get too busy, we won't see what you're saying. You know, it's just like me. If I'm directing, you don't even see what I'm saying because you're so caught up in my hands moving, okay? Uh, uh, and also, you need to understand... Try get an understanding of music. Understand the measures. Understand the flow, the time, the timing of the music. No, because when you understand the timing of the music and you you flowing in the rhythm of the music, then that helps you to give the signals out on time, on time. And I'll dem I'll try to demonstrate that uh, in a few minutes to you. Um, now we're going to get into the hand signals. That's what everybody's kind of like. Now, you know, everybody directs different. Some of you, if you, if this is your signal, I, you know, I have a hard time twisting my finger, you know, with the crisscross fingers or, you know, the okay sign or this, or you pat the top of your head to pat the forehead, go back to the beginning, whatever signals you're using, if that's what you're comfortable doing, it's fine. I'm not here to tell you to change uh, your style. If that's all you, I mean, I'm not t here to tell you to do that. What I am saying is make sure you communicate that to the masses, you know, do give whatever information you can to them before they get to any other stanza of the song or if they sing the song or whatever it is. All right. All right. Um, just quickly, I got notes. I'm, I'm trying not to detain you all too long. Cause it's just a little weekly seminar. Um, some of the things that you, uh, some people use different signals. Um, the one, you know, they use this, the fist, you know, say I'm at, it can mean I'm at the end of the song. It could be, um, I'm, uh, I'm ending this part, but I'm going to something else. Um, it can mean a host of things, but the problem is that just make sure they understand. Like if we're singing, let me give myself as an example, and then I kind of run through, run through this. 
when we're singing the song, just uh, I just use Hezekiah Walker's song, All of My Life. All of my life, I never know you to fail. You remain the same, and wonderful is your name, name. You know, I mean, when I give those signals, they know. I just whip it around real quick. They know that I'm going back to the beginning. Whatever your signal is, sometimes I do a whole big circle, which means I'm going all the way back. Most of the time, I communicate that to them. Uh, I communicate to them. And when we sing it again, and I'm getting ready to go to the next part, this is pretty easy. You know, you can just do the thumb like you're hitchhiking. I think uh, <laughs> Professor John Henry says, so show the hiker. Right. Usually this means I'm coming out wherever I am. Uh, what a wonderful is your name. And I'm going like this. That means we're going to, you know, if I do this, say we're coming out of this. All of my life, I never you to fail. You remain the same. And wonderful is your name. I'm going to woke me. Because this means, you know, everybody knows when I direct, when I do this, that means woke me up. Wherever we are. I don't care if we're doing the Lord is blessing me. Who woke me up. They understand that. So you can just give them the words before you get there. I tell them, woke me. And I'm not going to sing the whole part with you because I'm expecting you to know the song, right? So I'm just giving you a little lead, lead. I'm telling the musicians. This is another thing. If we're singing, they say the choir's in front of me, and we're singing, da 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 you should be comfortable enough with the choir understanding that they continue to sing that stanza while I'm communicating to the musicians. I'm looking at them. That's how I do. And that's why I say you need to be comfortable with your song. And the choir needs to be comfortable with you. So if you're singing, wonderful is your name, you know, uh, woke me up this morning, started me on my way, blah, 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 blah. So they're going on. They have enough confidence in me that I know the song and I know where I'm going. Where I literally turn it to the musicians and tell them I'm going to the next phase. I'm doing whatever. And they're still singing and I'm talking to them going, okay, I'm going to the next part and I'm going to, for the rest of my life after this. And then I turn back to the choir and keep moving like nothing ever happened. You should be comfortable enough to do that. It's all about communication. It's not like you don't have to be the grand wizard. <laughs> okay. Just communicate. Okay, I happen to be, you know, an animated person. So I, I direct according to how I feel. Sometimes I direct them doing this. You know, anybody that see me direct, sometimes I'm doing this. And then sometimes I'm like, you know, I do all kinds of stuff up there. I, I don't know. It, it, it just depends on the song, what the spirit is moving in me. I, you know, it doesn't matter. And what I'm saying is, you know, whatever signals you want to use, it's fine, just as long as you communicate. But you should be comfortable enough that you sh you can turn and talk to the musicians, the choir know, okay, they're going to come back to me and tell me which way to go. Or if my leader, okay, or if I want to, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to the sopranos and I want them to sing by themselves, I just tell everybody this. They know that means be quiet. I'm talking to them, <laughs> you know. Or if the tenors are out of tune, Sopranos, just, and then I didn't know I'm talking to them. Or if I'm talking to tenors, sometimes I do a hand sign. T for tenors, sopranos, altos. It, it, it depends. It depends on you. And that's what I'm saying. Let your personality come out. Okay? I let mine all the way out when I'm up there. I mean, sometimes I'm like, you know, sometimes I just clap. And sometimes I give the A, the S, you know, or I talk to them like, what you got? What you got? Represent, represent. You know, it's. It depends when you're into it and when you allow yourself. Sometimes we restrict ourselves because we have in our minds, and I want you all to understand it. Sometimes we restrict ourselves because we have in our minds that as a director or a directress, I have to do it a certain way. Oh my God, so and so is like this, you know, and I have to do it. No, you don't. You just do you where you're comfortable, okay? I tend to be, you know, all over. Like sometimes when I direct, um, what's this uh, Ricky Diller song? God is great. And, they, you know, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I can't remember the part. But there's a part when he said about fight. And sometimes I do boxing moves, you know, and I go down, you know, whatever. I just, you know, whatever comes to your mind, it's, it's okay. As long as you're following in the spirit, it's okay. Don't get caught up in the movements. And I see people doing that. <laughs> and then they're directing and they all, 
you know, you just see all of this and you're like, I'm like, what, what are you doing? Bring it in. Bring it in. There are different ways to tell your choir to bring the sound down. You can, you know, tell them whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Just tell them, put your finger, and they know that means to bring it down. PMSMO, bring the sound down. Or sometimes I tell them this way, or I just say, bring it in. Bring it in. And they know to bring it. You know, I'm grabbing the sound, and I'm bringing it in. Okay? All right? That's another way to tell them to bring it in. Or you can just, you know, like they're on the Mount Hill, and I just tell them to bring it down, and they know, come on down with the sound. Or if I want them to go up, I just... You know, and they know, go up or go up or what, however, okay? When you want them to, um, what's another movement someone was asking me to demonstrate? When you want them to um, modulate, you can do, you know, everybody has a different way of doing it. You can do it this way, this way. I mean, some most of the time I start at the bottom because I know that that's the, that's the root note. And most of the time I got the musicians watching me as well because, you know, sometimes I get confused because, you know, I'm a musician. So I, you know, like holding up fingers and they're looking at me like, what, the second chord? What is that? You know, and, and the choir, you know, sometimes. So just make sure they understand. But a lot of times I have, um, I can't stand up because then you, I'll be out of the picture range. But I may have it where I'm, I start here. We on the first inversion, first the root. We could be singing. Um, what's this song? Uh, oh, it just slipped my mind. We offer praise. And you know, you do the, you know, the first one for your goodness and your mercy toward us. Then you raise it in the middle for your goodness and your mercy toward us for your goodness. Okay. You can, it's different levels. You can do it that way. Raise and the choir knows, okay, we're going up. All right, that's an easier that's an easier way to me. That's an easier way to do it because you understand we're down low, then we come into the middle, and then we coming up high. Okay. But even with you doing all of the different, you know, time signals, you know, whatever the cuts, you know, I want you to snap the music. You can grab when you want them to end abruptly. You can, or, you know, sometimes I grab the fist. Sometimes I just, psh, or sometimes I just go. Psh, you know, just throw it at them. It all depends. It's so many different, you know, it's so many different ways to direct it. You know, um, I'm trying to think of all of the ones that I do. A lot of times I don't remember because I, I'm, in, I'm caught up. And when you're caught up, you do so many different things. And as long as you communicate that to people, it's fine. Uh, but one thing um, I will say, you need to practice. Don't try this out in public without practicing. Is no sin. <laughs> Not right. I can't tell you how many count, even myself now. And I've been um thanks Natalie, invert. Um I've been directing a little over over 45 years, because I started as a child. And even now today, when I have a conference and and, and people consider me a veteran. And, you know, people tell me all the time, oh, my God, you know, I don't like directing behind you. Let me direct in front of you. I'm like, what? I don't think I'm all that great. You know, I just know the art of communication and I learned sign language and I kind of put all of that together and being, you know, being with my dad. He was a dancer and all of that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot of a lot of, a lot of body language communication and, you know, whatever with the hand. So I kind of use that in communicating with people. Because especially, you know, in my capacity, I generally end up directing people that I don't know. You know, a mass of people that I don't know. So even myself, being directing as much as I have and winning as many awards as I have, God has allowed me to God be the glory. He's allowed me to win them. I still stand in front of that mirror and practice. I get like a whole, maybe seven to 12 or 13 songs, just like musicians practice. I have to practice directing because I get rusty as I forget, like do my thing and just run all off, you know. I stand there. You need to get in the mirror and practice. Get a song and just go through it. I mean, it's, you know, total praise. Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hills. You know, get in the mirror. There's no shame in that. Get in the mirror and run through it. Just 
whatever. If you, of course, you, you know, if you got it, you're not going to do like me. But I mean, you just, just let it, you have to learn how to just let the music flow. Okay. And it's okay to get in front of the mirror and practice. But you know, one thing I've, I've learned how to just let the music flow. Don't try to push it or force it or make it come out. You can't make it come out. It has to just flow from inside and just come out. And I learned to just feel, feel the music, feel, feel the pulse of God when the music is going, following the spirit and just feeling it and knowing which way I should go. No, I just let it almost like a river, like you put a flower on a river bed or something and you, and it just flows with the, that's where you have to get to where it just flows. The spirit will lead you which way to go and how to do, cause he knows you. So you relax and you let him just guide you and lead you which way to go. And it will just flow. Okay. When you, um, you want to make sure that they understand that you're your choir or whoever you directing, that they understand everything that you're doing. You know, um, when you're doing the verse, the chorus, the band, generally when you're, when you get into where you're directing a mass of people that don't know you, I generally try to keep the signals very clear and concise. I don't try to do, you can't direct a mass of people the way you direct your local church choir. Cause of, Apparently they know you more. They know you. You've been working with them for a while. But when you're in the capacity that I serve in, where you're di you're directing multiple choirs with multiple people, you have to keep those signals clear and concise. <laughs> you can't run off until that group gets used to you. Then you can kind of ad lib and run all off and whatever else. But make sure that your signals are clear. I hope I'm helping somebody. Okay. Um, like I said, some people, you know, when they want to go to the top, they hit the top here. I have never done that. I just tell you, go back to the beginning. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just tell people, go back to the top. I, okay. But so if you want to hit the hit top of your head, that's fine. You know, however you want to do it, whatever your signal is, if you want to, you know, like I said, if you want the, the sopranos to sing, you could just point to them. You know, tell everybody else, be quiet. You go over here and you be quiet. I'm going over here and you be quiet. I'm going there. You know, that's how you do it. Not, nothing really serious. If you, uh, if you want to hold, do the vamp, you know, sometimes when they want you to repeat something, some people do this. That's okay. I do this, snap it around once and they know, keep repeating it until she holds her hand up. And, you know, I may turn and go talk to somebody else while the choir is still going on. And, you know, I'm talking to the musicians, whatever. Well, they know to keep going. When I snap it like that, that means to keep going. So, I mean, it's just different ways you can do that. It's okay if you do that. You know, some people say, oh, well, that's kind of the pinwheel. It's okay. If that's the way you communicate, it's okay. As long as the choir and the musicians know which way you're going, that's fine. Um, some people even count down. You know, when they get ready to end the song, like some people, instead of holding up a fist, they said four, three, two, one one then the fist to let people know that we're winding down we're getting ready to come out of this some people use the thumb the hiker thumb whichever way is comfortable for you every you know what i'm saying with just whatever is comfortable for you um if you want to repeat the final line or you want to you know uh like sometimes um what's that song the lord is blessed lord is blessing me right now and then they want to do that you have to get that in there real quick you know, you may loop it real quick. Right now, it's best. I find it easier when you're directing is if you kind of say the first three words of the stanza. Because they're watching you. And if you if you pronounce the words in such a way, you know, let's say, you know, right now, they will they'll know, okay, that's where she's going or that's where he's going. Be specific in what you're doing. Know where you're going. Don't just be flighty. I mean, I know sometimes we get up there and we forget the song. I mean, I'm, you know, I can tell you sometimes we get up there and we, I actually forget the song <laughs> while I'm directing. I do, but you have to learn. Then there are going to be times that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to forget to give the signal and whatever. It's not the end of the world. It happens to everybody. It happens to me. It's not the end of the world. But what you do is just regroup real quick. Learn how to do something in between there. If you forget the song and you forget which way to go, just have the choir to clap. 
until you get your bearings and talk to somebody and say, well, what's the next part? You understand what I'm saying? Learn how to improvise. That's another thing that um, marks a good director is you learn how to improvise. When you see that a song may not be going the way that it should, learn how to change it. It's okay to change the song. I can tell you when sometimes with my choir, if they sing the song and it's not going anywhere, I may change that song three times. Because it's just not work, we, You know, and if I have to jump from A flat to B flat, then back down to A flat, I'll change it until we get to a song that's, that's like working. You can't be afraid. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not comfortable, I'm not telling you to jump out in the river. But learn, you have to learn to develop confidence in yourself. And that's like the first, that's one of the first steps. You have to be, have confidence, confidence in God and confidence in yourself that you can do the job. OK, because if you don't feel within yourself that you can do the job, then that that puts pressure on everybody else that's behind you. So take the time. Number one, take the time to practice. Take the time to practice. Get in that mirror, get your songs, you know, how, however you can do it. Practice makes perfect. I'm telling you, you can't get away from that. Uh, number two, make sure you know the songs that you're trying, that you're directing. If you're not comfortable, don't let anybody stick you up there and you're not comfortable. It's okay to say no. I'm not comfortable with that. Okay? You I, I don't have an issue with it. When I have, you know, a staff of directors and they tell me I'm not comfortable with this son, that's fine. You know, I don't get upset. I just say, you know, move on to the next person. I find something else that you're more comfortable with. If you know, know your speeds. That's another thing. Know your speed. Everybody cannot direct a fast song. They get confused. Everybody cannot direct a slow song, and everybody cannot direct a medium song. Now, of course, if you're the minister of music, you need to be able to direct everything. No excuses. Okay? But if you have a staff director, you may have somebody say, well, I'm not comfortable doing a fast song. They get confused. They can't give the signals fast enough because they're like, oh, my God, it's too fast. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Well, if you have, then you have somebody that's better with a medium song. They can't do slow because they lose time. You know, they can't keep the time, the movement. <laughs> so you have to know who you are. If your best side is fast, then let your leader know, my best side is fast songs. I can't really get with that. But don't use that as an excuse not to learn how to do it. What you do is you go home and you get a slow song or a medium song, wherever you're weak at, get that song, get in the mirror, and practice until you get it right. And then when you get in front of people, you'll be surprised. All you need is one time, and then you'll see, well, this is not so bad after all. Directing really isn't bad. We make it, we, what happens is that we get so many people in front of us that make it look bad. To you, like, I can't do that. No, that's them. That's got nothing to do with you. All you need to do is take what I'm saying, basic songs, do basic things, learn, make sure you communicate to people, and that's fine. And then you'll be fine. Okay, but those two things, I can tell you, those, those are the two legs that you need to stand on. Practicing and knowing the songs. And the third leg is communication. That's all. Those three, three things are the basic necessities to direct a choir. That's all. Everything else is a bonus. If you know how to do sign language and do all this stuff and whatever, that's fine. If you can stand there like Donald Lawrence and speak and direct and, you know, whatever, that's fine. If you can do like Dr. McAllister, that's fine. You know, as you go on in your practice, that's fine. But the most important thing is those three legs. Practice, know the songs, and communicate to your group, and you will be fine. I know you probably thought it would be more, a little more complex than that, but it's really not. I just want you all to get the basics, to understand what you are required to do. You don't have to be like everybody else. Just do do what God has given you to do, and everything will come out fine. Uh, David said, nothing wrong with practicing in the mirror. Absolutely not. There is nothing wrong. I do it all the time, and it's, it's actually something that you should add to your rope if you want to be good at what you know. If you just want to be, you know, just be, okay, well, then you continue to do what you're doing. But if you want to, it's a craft. It is an art to directing. It is something that you need to practice, to develop, and you get better as you practice and you develop and you learn and you watch people when you out. When I'm out um, seeing 
different, you know, venues on choirs and directors. I'm not looking at them so much to learn their moves. I'm looking at pretty much their communication skills. I'm looking at the choir, how they receive them. I'm looking at the spirit of the people, you know, the attitude of the choir, you know, when people get up, you know, are they excited or are they looking like, oh my God, you know, and once I see that, then I'm kind of, you know, I'm sitting there, well, okay, you know, something is not right here. So, but that's basically all you have to do. I hope I helped somebody on tonight. It looked like I did. I had quite a few of you on here, and I'm glad to see you out here with me on, on my diehard, my diehard sweethearts, I call them, on Facebook Live and also on intellectualradio.com. Um, that's all I got for you tonight. I hope I helped somebody. Uh, next week, next time we have something, I'm going to see what we're going to do. I'm not sure. You all can send me some suggestions on what I should talk about on our next show, our next weekly seminar, I call that. Thank you for joining me on tonight. It's been a pleasure sharing with you, and I hope to see you soon out there. Good night. Have a good evening.